Welcome to another Glass of Bubbly video and this time I want to look at PETNAT. So PETNAT is the abbreviation for the word Petinot Naturel. It is a French word so and the translation of that is naturally sparkling. So in, in the wine production world it is generally known as the method ancestral and um, it regards to the, the first fermentation. The first fermentation is completed within the bottle. So usually you are left with the yeast sediment, the yeast sediment at the bottom of the bottle. Uh, it is not disgorged. When, when sparkling wines such as say champagne are disgorged, the yeast sediment is extracted, leaving a nice clear wine. With a pet nap wine, you will generally have some yeast sediment at the bottom, so sometimes you will get what we would see as a cloudy wine that you serve. So it doesn't mean it's bad, it's the effect that the winemaker themselves are looking to achieve. So for today's example, I'm using the Regons Galitza Veronina Petnat, which is a bio wine, uh, which I have here. I'm, I'm being a little bit cautious with the bottle because what I want, don't want to do is to mix the sediment. So I've had this nicely stored. I'm going to open this and then what I'm going to do is pour this sparkling wine and at each time I'm going to mix the sediment a bit more. So ideally, if it all goes well, we'll see different styles of sparkling wine in the glass that the glasses are have in front of you. We have got a tough cork, but it is going bit by bit. There we go. So I'm going to pour the first glass, which I hope will be a relatively clear glass of sparkling wine. And there we go. So looking at that wine, it is relatively clear. There's a touch of powderness to it, but there isn't an awful lot. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give the bottle a couple of turns. So the yeast sediment has a chance to mix with the sparkling wine in the bottle. And I'll pour the second glass. There we go. Not too far off the first, to be honest. Maybe it's a touch cloudier. And I'm going to do likewise. Normally when you serve this wine, say at a restaurant and you have a sommelier, the sommelier will do exactly this. They will twist the bottle around to get the sediment reacting with the wine. And I'm going to go for a third glass, which I can see now is cloudier than the previous two. And what I'd like to do as well after is to uh, look at the aromas and the flavours as well as the appearance of the wine to see how they vary because with a pet nap wine you'd have a lot of different expressions in one bottle and so if you prefer it without too much yeast you can enjoy the bottle that way you can really mix the yeast up so you can have the yeast expressing itself more giving you kind of yeasty bready uh, even such as dry pear kind of aroma and flavours. As I say, this is the Regonz Galitza. This is a Slovenian sparkling winery, uh, one of the biggest, and this is a bio pet nap. So I'm giving us a good kind of few turns now. We're really looking to mix things up. This is the fifth glass. Again, very cloudy. Nothing wrong with the wine, because it's a pet that. It's a petit naturel. As we say, it is known in the production method as being method ancestral. ancestral. I'm going to give this a little bit of welly for the last kind of a glass and keeping my thumb over the top of the bottle. So this will have the maximum effect, ideally, of the yeast sediment. And boom. And I 
plus C, yes, plenty of yeast in that last glass there. So we've got different levels of um, cloudiness in these glasses. The first one is clear. I can see the second one a touch of cloudiness, not much difference. But then the third one cloudy, fourth cloudy, fifth definitely cloudier, and the sixth we've got total cloudiness to it. So I'm going to check the aroma of glass one. Quite fresh, quite fruity, orchard fruits, go for the flavour. Very dry, uh, but very nice expression of fruits. Um, soft acidity, not too strong on the acidity. No yeasty character. Let's go for glass number two. Similar to glass number one, I've got a touch of bakery, uh, potentially croissant. It's a very, a very faint element of kind of patisserie. A flavour very much like the first. Probably a touch more citrus element to it, but more or less spot on to the first flavour. Glass number three. Again, I'm getting more of a yeasty aroma than very apparent. Certainly cake, a sweet cake, sweet cake, a sweet um, kind of glazed um, croissant. Flavour. Again, not too different to the first two. Possibly a little bit softer on the citrus side, but it's very fresh, fruity. It's coming across a touch more acidic than the first one. I may have to come back to that and see why. It's fruity, still very much in its character. I don't get much yeasty um, f uh, elements in the, in the palate with glass number three. Number four, softer, rounder, smoother kind of nose, a yellow fruit pastry. It's really incredible how the first, first wine had no kind of yeast character to it, but as we've added the yeast, it's really making its mark. Hmm. It's similar to the first two, but not as sharp. I've got a rounded flavour. I've got a touch of the pastry, a touch of, not so much biscuit, but maybe a, a, an apricot kind of gateau. Um, or apricot croissant, something like that, with glass number four. Number five, certainly, I'm, I'm, it, the, the fruity element's fading away. I'm getting more towards a pastry style. It's not overly expressive, it's fairly quiet on the nose, but enough to say this is a pastry candied fruit, yellow candy fruit on the nose. Not liking that balance, I'm liking that balance of flavours there. It's fresh, it's crisp, it's dry. Then I'm getting a, a kind of a soft citrus, but not too acidic citrus uh, taste. And then I've got a subtlety of, of pastry elements. Um, once again, the, the, the croissants come into mind with this one. And there's the sixth glass that had quite a few turns, so this would have the most, obviously, of the interaction with the yeast. Soft expression on the nose. I've got a touch, a very faint touch of pear, dry pear. I have got the soft uh, expression of pastry once again. Not so much bread or anything like that on toast, but more towards the cake style. I'm going to go for flavour. Flavours remain fairly constant throughout, but here I'm liking it even further, but better than the fifth one. This is nice, fruity, touch dry, dry, but it progresses to more of a sweeter character mid-length. There's citrus, orchard fruits in there. I've got pear, I've got the, the, the pastry element to it as well, but it's, it's lightly presented, it's not too aggressive. It tastes clean and clear, it tastes natural, obviously uh, method on soft style and naturally sparkling. It's, it tastes very clean, um, very, it's got some character to it. It's a good wine, it's, it, and especially if you've got guests or if you're new to the world of wine, it's a very interesting example to taste. Um, there are lots of pet knacks around to, to try. Slovenia, funny enough, does have quite a few good examples. Um, I'm running today with the Rigonskovica, 
I believe this is a gold medal winning sparkling wine. But certainly, with regards to the overall experience, there is a variation on the on the aroma from glass one to six. The flavours remain fairly constant, but there is a variation. So you, you can enjoy this wine as the clear style, or obviously you can pick your favourite kind of glass all the way up to the very cloudy option, which is glass number six. So this is the, the Petnat, the Renina Bio Wine from Rigonska Litsa and the based in, in Slovenia. And um, hopefully you enjoy this video and we'll release some more very soon. Thank you for watching.